Chapter 3. The Legal Name Game The Legal Name Game is one of the greatest con games that the Dark Forces invented to enslave your soul. The Dark Magicians of the New World Order NWO, which are the minions of the Dark Forces, like to use the legal name to trick you to agree to unknowingly give your natural rights away to them. Once you do this, everything that you have purchased or owned under that legal name legally belongs to their government. In other words, your kids, cars, house, land, and anything that you have purchased or owned using your legal name legally belong to their government. The good news is that the Dark Magicians did not create the legal name game in a lawful way, and therefore they have no lawful standing. If you want to learn how to defend your rights effectively, you need to know the difference between the word legal and lawful. It is crucial to define the difference between legal and lawful. The generic constitution references genuine law. The present civil authorities and their courts use the word legal. Is there a difference in the meanings? The following is quoted from a Dictionary of Law 1893. Lawful, in accordance with the law of the land, according to the law, permitted, sanctioned, or justified by law. Lawful properly implies a thing conformable to or enjoined by law. Legal, a thing in the form or after the manner of law or binding by law, a writ or warrant issuing from any court, under color of law, is a legal process however defective. See legal. Legal, Latin legalis, pertaining to the understanding, the exposition, the administration, the science and the practice of law, as the legal profession, legal advice, legal blanks, newspaper, implied or imputed in law, opposed to actual, legal looks more to the letter, and lawful to the spirit of the law. Legal is more appropriate for conformity to positive rules of law, lawful for accord with ethical principle. Legal imports rather that the forms of law are observed, that the proceeding is correct in method, that rules prescribed have been obeyed, lawful that the right is actful in substance, that moral quality is secured. Legal is the antithesis of equitable and the equivalent of constructive. Two Abbots Law Dick. 24. In simple terms, something that is lawful is superior than something that is legal. If something is legal, it does not necessarily mean that it is lawful. For example, killing someone intentionally is unlawful but can be legal. Lawful is about natural rights and legal deals with rights given by man or the government. According to the 1893 Dictionary of Arts and Sciences and General Literature, the R.S. Peel 9th Encyclopedia Britannica, the word legal means the undoing of God's law. In the legal system, many legal terms are used to trick you to agree to be a legal person, which is an artificial person, also known as a corporation. A corporation artificial person is a dead entity that has no natural rights. By tricking you to consent to be a legal person, the dark magicians and their agents of the legal system can legally claim that you have no natural rights, unless you rebut their claim. In other words, the legal system is designed to trick you to temporarily give up your natural rights, which are the inherent rights given to you by the Supreme Creator. The process of tricking you to give up your natural rights is the undoing of God's law. This is the deeper meaning of why the word legal means the undoing of God's law. Be aware that when I say God, I am talking about the Supreme Creator the source of creation, and therefore I am not talking about the ancient gods or the dark lords worshipped by certain secret societies. What is the legal name? The legal name is not the name given to you by your parents. Instead, it is a forgery name created by the government to trick you to do business with it. To be more specific, your real name is an appellation. Only things have names. Furthermore, living and breathing people have autographs, not signatures. A signature is used by a corporate officer to do business with a corporation. In other words, your legal name is the corporate name that the government uses to attach you to a dead fictional character so that the government can identify you and do business with you. Because of this, if you want to successfully free yourself from the dark forces and their dead matrix system, you need to stop thinking that the legal name is who you are. Names and legal names are not real people made of flesh and blood. Instead, they are symbols of things non-beings. In legal terms, names are artificial persons which are corporations. Because corporations are artificial persons, they can be pretty much anything. For example, in general, religious institutions, banks, names, and the government are all corporations for the reason that they are fictitious entities. I will say this again. Your name or legal name is not who you really are, because you are a nameless spiritual being living in a body of a man male or female. It is essential that you get this fact through your head or you will have a very hard time freeing yourself from the Earth Matrix drama. Once you become aware of the legal name fraud and comprehend it, you should feel the magic spell of the legal name slowly losing its effect, 
causing you to wake up and becoming more aware of who you really are. Some spiritual teachers have said that the legal name is the mark of the beast. In my opinion, the mark of the beast can mean a few different things associated with a mark of spiritual slavery. The legal name is one of them, which is why they always tell you to sign your name on contracts. A word that has a strong connection to the legal name or the mark of the beast is signature. The word signature is defined as a person's name, or a mark representing it, as signed personally or by deputy, as in subscribing a letter or other document or any unique, distinguishing aspect, feature, or mark. Every time you sign your name, signature on a commercial contract, you agree to play the game of commerce, which is a game of battery invented by the dark forces to enslave your body, mind, and soul. In other words, the act of signing your name on a commercial contract is the process of marking yourself with one of the mark of the beasts. In the legal system, when a person's name is written in all lowercase i, John Quincy Adams it is usually referring to a natural and living person. Furthermore, when a person is described as John Quincy of the House Adams, it is referring to a natural and living person. When a name is not written like the previous two examples, 99% of the time it is referring to an artificial person also known as a corporation. It is important to know that in the legal system the word person can mean many things, such as a corporation, legal name, legal person, artificial person, or natural person. Nearly 99% of the time when you receive a letter or document from a bank, court, or government agency, your name is written in all capital letters. This all caps name tells lawyers, attorneys, and judges that it is a legal name of a corporation or a dead man's estate. If the legal name is written in all capital letters and the letters are italicized, it is the name of a ship. Here are some examples of how the name can be written in various ways. The following information is based on the U.S. legal system. Even though it is based on the U.S. legal system, it should also apply to English-speaking countries that are controlled by the Western legal system. John Quincy Adams equals a living American endowed with all his natural rights. John Quincy Adams equals a foreign citizen trust used in commercial shipping. John Quincy Adams equals a foreign estate trust. John Q. Adams equals a public transmitting utility company. John Q. Adams equals a public foundation. John Q. Adams equals a cooperative. John Quincy Adams equals a boat or ship used in public commerce. John Quincy Adams equals a commonwealth trust. J. Quincy Adams equals a slave owned by Exxon Corporation. J. Q. Adams equals a foreign pauper forbidden to own land. Adams, John Q. equals a taxpayer. Adams, John Q. equals a soldier. Adams, John Q. equals a slave. There are dozens of different potential meanings that can be arbitrarily assigned to anyone's name and used to represent radically different entities. In a verbal conversation we can talk all day long about someone or something named John Quincy Adams and which John Quincy Adams or what kind of John Quincy Adams will never be known, except from the context of the conversation. But on paper the use of such a system instantly defines what or whom is being talked about. If you know the system, shortly after you were born, your parents, parents gave you a name. They gave you or you a name because you are going to be a good little sheep for the dark magicians. Did you know that the word you is defined as a female sheep and is pronounced similar to the word you? The dark magicians like to call you, you a sheep or sheeple, because sheep are some of the dumbest animals on the planet, and they are great at following orders. The word sheeple is defined as people compared to sheep and being docile, foolish, or easily led. It is derived from the combination of the two words sheep and people. Why did your parents, parents give you, you a name? Because the word name sounds like Nahum, which is a sound that a horse likes to make. Besides calling you a sheep, the dark magicians also like to call you a horse, because a horse is phonetically horse. If you think this is just a coincidence, you have no idea how deep the horse connection goes. Read further and I will show you why it is not a coincidence. When a couple have relationship problems and are constantly arguing, they are sometimes described as nagging each other. A nag is an old, inferior, or worthless horse. If they argue and nag at each other for too long, their voices may eventually sound hoarse. Phonetically, the word horse sounds similar to the word horse. Maybe the relationship is not stable because the groom did not pony up enough courage to get a good job. Or maybe they could not afford a baby crib. The word crib is simply an English synonym for pony. As for the word groom, it is defined as a man or boy in charge of horses or the stable. The word stable means a building for the lodging and feeding of horses, cattle, etc. in horse racing. 
The word stable means an establishment where racehorses are kept and trained. As human beings, we are being trained and groomed by the dark forces and their minions to become the horse. Whores of Babylon, the ancient capital city of Babylonia. Today, many of the dark teachings and philosophies of certain secret societies can be traced back to Babylon. The word Babylon originated from the Greek version of Akkadian Babyloni, meaning the gate of the gods. Be aware that they are not talking about the supreme creator or the gods that live in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Instead, they are talking about the alien gods. Let us turn our attention back to the horse connection. One of the major reasons why a couple argues is for the reason that they do not know how to manage their time. Etymologically, the word manage is derived from the Italian word mangire, which means to handle, especially to control a horse. Another term that is related to horse is ponytail. Sometimes a man does not like it when his woman puts her hair in a ponytail. This may sound silly but some men do get angry at their women for putting their hair in a ponytail too much. Furthermore, women who do not have nice bangs can be a turnoff for some men. Bangs usually do not cause too many relationship issues, so they should not be the main problem. Oh, I know, maybe the man does not like to bang his woman anymore. When the German word pony is translated into English, it means bang, bangs, fringe. In English, the word pony is defined as a horse of any small type or breed. Do you still think the horse, horse connection is just a coincidence? We have barely scratched the surface of the horse connection. The legal name in commerce. In commerce, when you see a name written in all capital letters, it is a corporate name or a legal name, which is a corporation. The legal name plays a significant role in your life because it is used by the government as a conduit or a liaison so that it can do business with you the natural living person. This is why whenever the government, bank, or any corporation sends you a document with your legal name on it. 99% of the time it is written in all capital letters. The process that allows the government to legally claim you as a corporate entity involves the creation of a fictional character, and then tricking you to consent to be that fictional character, which is the artificial person or legal name. This legal name was created shortly after you were born and was recorded on a bond. This bond that represents the date of your birth is known as your birth certificate. The word bond is legally defined as a contract by specialty to pay a certain sum of money, being a deed or instrument under seal, by which the maker or obligor promises, and thereto binds himself, his heirs, executors, and administrators, to pay a designated sum of money to another, usually with a clause to the effect that upon performance of a certain condition as to pay another and smaller sum the obligation shall be void. To connect the dots, the birth certificate bond is a financial contract created to enslave your body, mind, and soul, so that they can use you as collateral for the debt of the government. Anyone who has a birth certificate has been physically and spiritually enslaved by the dark forces. Unfortunately, most people are unaware of this fraud. Because of this, they have little chance of freeing themselves from the birth certificate bond. This certificate is a magic contract, therefore, it not only bonds you at the physical level but also at the spiritual level. Have you ever wondered why birth certificates have seals on them? These seals are sigils. The word sigil is derived from the Latin word sigilla, meaning seal. Keep in mind that each alphabet of the language system is also a sigil. The word sigil is defined as a sign, word, or device held to have occult power in astrology or magic. Words are sigils because the letters that make up words were created using sacred geometry and sacred science. Let us turn our attention back to the legal name. Shortly after you were born, the government gave you a legal name that looked nearly identical to the name given to you by your parents. Your legal name, which is used by the government to do business with you the body of water, or liquid, is written in all capital letters because it is a piece of liquidated capital, or cap at all. In other words, your legal name has been securitized and turned into a financial instrument to seal your body so it can be sold in commerce. Hence, the term liquidated capital. To liquidate something is to sell it off entirely, or sell it to pay off a debt. This process of liquidating something to make money is called liquidated capital. Why is that you may ask? Because you, the person who has been securitized, were born in the womb of your mother, which was mostly made of water liquid. You are also mostly made of water. Because you are mostly made of liquid and have been securitized, you are considered liquidated capital. The word capital comes from the Latin word capitalis, meaning of the head, hence capital, chief, first. It also comes from another Latin word caput, which translates to English as head. When you really study the occult definitions in the previous few paragraphs, 
you should come to the conclusion that the process of turning you into capital money or liquidated capital is their way of saying that you have a bounty on your head. Your birth certificate is the bond with your legal name written on it in all capital letters, and therefore it is the financial document security that has the value of the bounty on your head. This is why your birth certificate is traded on the stock market. In the Western world and many Eastern countries, people are born with a bounty on their heads due to the fact that their government considers them as enemies of the state. According to Judge Dale, author of The Great American Adventure, The Secrets of America, if you live in the USA, the act that makes you an enemy of the US government is the Trading with the Enemy Act. Even though the corporate US government considers you US, citizen as an enemy of the state it actually has no jurisdiction over you as a man with a body made of flesh and blood however if you agree to be a united states citizen then the u.s government has jurisdiction over you the good news is that the u.s government only has jurisdiction over you when you are acting in the capacity of a united states citizen for example if you have a driver's license the only time when the police has jurisdiction over you is when you are driving a vehicle registered to the state. By driving a registered vehicle, you are acting in the capacity of a government agent. In other words, the U.S. government only has jurisdiction over you when you are using your driver's license or any government-issued ID or contract with the legal name. The reason why the U.S. government has jurisdiction over United States citizens is due to the fact that they are considered artificial persons corporations and therefore they have no natural rights. Furthermore, United States citizens are considered employees of the United States, Inc., and thus are bound to the acts and statutes, rules, and codes of a corporation. If you want proof that the United States is a corporation, look at subsections 15 and 15A in Title 28 U.S. Code SS 3002, and you should see this sentence. United States means a federal corporation. The act that legally created a corporate version of the United States of America was the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871. Unlike the country United States of America, which is a republic and is written with a lowercase u in the word united, the United States of America, Inc., is a democracy. Shorty after the Great Depression of the 1930s, the United States of America, Inc., changed its name to the United States, Inc. However, it is common for the United States, Inc. to do business as the United States of America, Inc. In a society where the people are ignorant and irresponsible, democracy is one of the worst forms of government. The word democracy comes from the Greek word demos, which means common people. A group of common people can also be called a mob. One of the origins of the word krisai is the Latin word kratia, meaning power might, rule, sway, power over, a power, authority. Based on these occult definitions, democracy means mob rule. In a democracy, the voting power of the majority overrules the rights of the minority. For example, if a person were on trial for not believing in God and 51% of the people in the room vote that he should be hung, that person would be hung for not believing in God. In a republic, that person's free will and natural rights would be protected. Do you understand now why democracy means mob rule? This is why in a society where the people are ignorant and irresponsible, democracy is one of the worst forms of government. Today, most people in the USA and throughout the world are ignorant and irresponsible, which is why it is easy for the dark magicians of the New World Order to enslave them under their democratic government. Do you understand now why the US government is always talking about spreading democracy throughout the world? Democracy is just another form of communism except that the people have the privilege to vote. However, their votes do not really matter because the voting system is rigged. Keep in mind that a privilege is not a natural right, and therefore it can be taken away by the government. How the voting system is used to drain your energy. This spring 2016, many Americans are watching the 2016 presidential debate, so they can make an informed decision to vote for the candidate that they believe is the best to lead their country. What most Americans do not realize is that the presidential debate is a play, and therefore all presidential candidates are actors auditioning for an acting job of a corporation called the United States. May the best actor win. After being hired, the new president is assigned to more acting lessons, so he or she can become one of the best professional actors and liars that money can buy. The dark magicians like presidents who are professional actors and liars because they can easily fool the American people to support the United States, Inc., and help expand its franchise around the world. 
The word franchise means the right or license granted by a company to an individual or group to market its products or services in a specific territory. But did you know that the word franchise can also mean the right to vote? Like any corporate employee, when a presidential candidate wins an election and is sworn into office, he or she becomes an employee of the United States, a federal corporation. Do you remember what I said earlier about Title 28 U.S.? Code SS 3002. Under Title 28 U.S., Code SS 3002 subsections 15 and 15A, United States means a federal corporation. It is right in their so-called laws, which are not laws but are acts and statutes. Hence, the play called the presidential debate. The presidential debate is a play because it has presidential candidates. Actors standing behind a podium like statues as they are worshipped like idols by naive citizens. The word idol is defined as an image or other material object representing a deity to which religious worship is addressed. Today, the US government is the new god or deity for Americans and their new religion is democracy. As an employee of the United States, Inc., the president has to follow the rules and codes acts and statutes of the United States or the president will be fired. Unlike a traditional employee, the president can only be fired by his or her board of directors, also known as the Congress. By now you should start to see how the offices of the United States are structured like a corporation, which is why the United States has a president and vice president, and a few secretary offices. One of its departments is even called U.S. Department of Human Resources. Because the United States is a corporation, it also has shareholders, which are the leaders of the New World Order. Most, if not all, of these leaders practice the art of dark magic, which is why I like to call them the dark magicians or the controllers. Some people like to refer to them as the elite, the cabal, or the international banksters. Because the United States has shareholders, its top priority is to make sure its shareholders are happy. The most profitable business for the United States is war which is why it has been constantly at war with other countries. Read this informative article titled America has been at war 93% of the time, 222 out of 239 years, since 1776 and you will know what I mean. All of these unlawful wars are engineered or partially planned by the controllers of the New World Order to make money and spread tyranny around the world. Because the people controlling the United States, Inc., like to engineer unlawful wars and the president is their main actor. Anyone who goes to a U.S. presidential debate or votes for a presidential candidate is pretty much spitting on the graves of the people who died fighting or standing up for freedom. What a disgrace to humanity, life, truth, and freedom. Worst of all, what a disgrace to the supreme creator. One important thing you need to know about the United States, Inc., is that its flag, which is the flag with the 50 stars and 13 stripes made of the color red and white, does not represent the country called the United States of America. Instead, it represents the corporation known as the United States, Inc. Usually written in all capital letters United States. Another important thing you need to know about the flag of the United States, Inc. is that when its border has a gold fringe, it represents the U.S. military flag of war. This flag deals with martial law, territorial law, and admiralty maritime law. When you see the gold fringe U.S. flag in a government building e.g. courtroom, it means that common law rights and the Constitution are suspended or void, and therefore the building is operating under military and commercial law. The U.S. military flag of war, which is the U.S. flag with the gold fringe on its border, was traditionally flown over U.S. military buildings only during wartime. Today, this flag is seen in nearly every court in the USA and in the offices of US politicians. In other words, Americans are living under a less severe form of martial law. If you have a flag of the United States, Inc., in your home or yard, you might want to remove it and throw it away. This flag does not really represent freedom because it is the flag of the United States, Inc., a corporation controlled by the New World Order NWO. The NWO is a secret organization controlled by mostly Western secret societies. Its main goal is to enslave the human race under a fascist and Nazi type 1 world government. Because the flag with the 50 stars and red and white stripes is the flag of the United States, Inc. If you are the type of people who likes to protest against the US government, do not bring that flag with you to the protest. If you were to bring it with you and wave it around like it represents freedom, 
you would be making a fool of yourself. It is like going to a protest against the Nazi while at the same time wearing a pro-Nazi shirt and carrying a Nazi flag. One thing you should know about protests is that they do not create real positive change, so it is best to avoid them. When you protest, you are basically telling the government that you want change, but you want the government to do it for you. In other words, you are still an incompetent baby who is not responsible enough yet to be free from the control of the government. Once you know that U.S. presidential candidates are actors auditioning for a corporate job of the United States, Inc., you should know why it is pointless to vote for these candidates. The U.S. voting system is a big fat scam anyways, so you are just wasting your time when you go vote at the voting booth. The truth is, as a United States citizen, you do not have the right to vote. In legal terms, your right to vote is actually a privilege because to be a United States citizen means that you are a legal person, also known as a corporation. Do you need evidence of this? According to Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition, a corporation is an artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state. An artificial person, legal person is considered a dead entity because it does not exist in the real world. Because a corporation is an artificial person, it has no natural rights, such as the right to vote, the right to speak, and the right to make choices. So, when U.S. politicians tell you that you have the right to vote as a United States citizen, they are already lying to you. Every time you vote for a U.S. politician to represent you in office, you consent to be governed by treasonous politicians. Nearly all of these politicians do not care about you for the reason that they work for the Dark Magicians and their New World Order NWO. All U.S. politicians working in Washington, D.C. have sworn in solemn oath to the NWO and therefore their allegiance is to the British monarchy, the Crown Temple and the Vatican and not to the American people. The right to vote in the United States is a big fat fraud, because your vote does not really matter, and the voting system is rigged somewhat like a casino. Furthermore when you vote, you are not voting for a president of a country, but for a president of a foreign corporation known as the United States, Inc. Also doing business as the United States of America, Inc. One thing you need to know about the US voting system is that the presidential candidates are chosen by the dark magicians of the New World Order, and they control both of the Republican and Democratic parties. The idea that we have choices when it comes to electing U.S. presidential candidates is an illusion. As an American, when you vote, you are basically committing treason against the country called the United States of America, which is made up of 50 separate states operating as a nation on the land jurisdiction. The United States, Inc is operating under the international jurisdiction of the sea, which is based on admiralty law the law of the sea. This law deals with commerce and therefore is sometimes known as the law of money. If you really want to know what you are doing when you vote, you need to study the occult definitions of the word vote. At the deeper level, the process of voting is a religious ritual created by the dark forces to drain your energy and enslave your body, mind, and soul. Do you need evidence of this? Read further and I will show you the evidence. The word vote is defined as a formal expression of opinion or choice, either positive or negative, made by an individual or body of individuals or the means by which such expression is made, as a ballot, ticket, etc. These two definitions of the word vote only show you the overt meanings of the word vote. To find the occult meanings of the word vote, you need to use the art of phonics to help you see the relation among words. Phonetically, the word vote sounds nearly identical to the word volt. Where do voters go vote? Volt at. They go to a voting booth or a polling, polling booth. The word poll sounds similar to the word poll, which is defined as either of the two regions or parts of an electric battery, magnet, or the like that exhibits electrical or magnetic polarity. In other words, a pole is the electric battery pole of positive plus or negative. This is why when you go vote, you go to the polls, polls, so that you can place your vote, vote on the candidate that you want to see put in charge. Once the votes, votes are counted. The politician or politician that receives the most votes, votes is the candidate that will be elected into the position of power. Maybe this is why it is called power politics. Every time you vote, you consent to give your electrical energy to the dark forces, so that they can use it to power their corporations, corpses and new world order. It is all about tricking you to give up your life force energy. The presidential election is a sick and evil con game created by the dark forces to con you to agree to be a human battery. 
so that they can drain your life force energy to power their dead matrix and corporations. This is why before they can summon you to go to court, they need to charge you first. Just like charging a battery before its energy is drained to power electronic devices. By now you should know that your legal name is a name of a corporation. Which is why 99% of the time it is written in all capital letters. It is important to know that even when your name is not written in all capital letters, it could still represent a corporation. Once you comprehend this process, you should know that your legal name is often written in all capital letters because it has been incorporated and securitized so it can be used in commerce. Another reason why your legal name is often written in all capital letters on government contracts e.g. Birth certificate is because capital letters are more effective for creating magic spells. Your birth certificate is not just a record of birth, it is also a spiritual contract that is sealed with dark magic. This is why there are sigil seals on your birth certificate. Your parents' signatures are also sigils, seals and therefore on the day they sign your birth certificate. Their actions spiritually sealed or bonded you to the birth certificate contract. When you split the word signature into two words, it transforms into signature. The prefix sig is defined as right, mark, label. As for the word nature, one of its origins is the Latin word natura, which literally means birth. It can also mean course of things, natural character, constitution, quality, the universe. Based on these occult definitions, when your parents sign their signatures on your birth certificate that has your name on it, they marked you with sigils and therefore spiritually and magically bonded you to the birth certificate contract. By doing this, they also signed your natural rights away to the state, making you a property of the government. Unfortunately, your parents most likely did not know this for the reason that they lack the knowledge to understand magic. The signature and legal name are two of the marks of the beast.